Saluete omnes. This is Abbey Latin Liber Primus, Chapter 9. This is Exercise C of Chapter 9, Parsing, Latin to English. And by parsing, I mean the exercise or act of giving the parts, reading a sentence. How do we read? We read by parsing, by dissecting each word, starting at the left, reading each word, parsing each word, giving each part of the word as we encounter them, moving towards the right. So in parsing a Latin noun, we give the first the dictionary entry of that noun so we know what we're working with. Then in the sentence, we identify the noun's case, and then the noun's number, singular or plural, and then from the noun's case, we derive the noun's reason, its function, its syntax, how it acts in the sentence, what its job is. So for instance, if we have a noun that's in the dative case, its reason is indirect object. Dative's primary job is to show the indirect object. When parsing a Latin verb, we are to give that verb's dictionary entry, that is the verb's principal parts, and then the verb's person, number, and tense in the sentence. So sententia prima. Cras viri navigabimus. Animos vestros parate. So starting on the left, working towards the right, parsing, dissecting each word as we come across it. So cross, don't procrastinate, don't put it off for tomorrow. It's an adverb because it describes when. When will the action of the verb occur? It will occur tomorrow. So we're dealing with an action in the future. The verb will be in the future because the action is happening cross tomorrow. <clears throat> Notice the commas. We have comma, noun, comma. So this word is offset by commas. Keep that in mind. Weir, weary, masculine, which means man. Now this form, weary, could be the genitive singular. If the noun is genitive, then it is showing possession. The noun is possessive, so of a man, of the man, or we could say the man's. Could also be nominative plural. Weary, nominative plural. If this noun is nominative, then it is showing the subject. This noun is the subject of our sentence and is doing the action of the verb. It could also be vocative, which we learned in this lesson. So vocative, most of the time the vocative has the same form as the nominative, most of the time. In fact, all plurals, all plural nouns, the nominatives and the vocatives are the same which is why the vocative is post-positive. Post-positive means placed afterwards. So the vocative is rarely, if ever, the first word in a sentence. Whereas nominatives tend to live in the beginning of a sentence, unless the author wants to emphatically put them at the end of the sentence. So you would normally expect to find nominatives near the beginning. Vocatives are a little bit of a ways into the sentence. They're rarely the first word so that you know that you're not dealing with a nominative because the forms are almost always the same. However, because this is AD 2020, commas, we have commas, we have punctuation, which the Romans did not have. So we offset our vocatives with commas. Tomorrow, comma, men, comma. So this is vocative. Cross out genitive, cross out nominative. This is the vocative. The only reason for vocative, the vocative case, is direct address. It's when you directly call or name somebody. Call somebody by what they are. So men. Men, comma, tomorrow, and then carry on with the sentence. So the direct address, the vocative in English, is typically offset by commas. Useful trick. Handy to know. Now we gabimus. Now we go, now we got it, now we got we, now we got us to sail. So, first person plural, because of the mus personal ending, mus, first person plural, that means we are doing the action. Bimus, bimus, so bi, the future tense marker, the actions in the future, as we predicted from the first word. And then, from now on, we will be adding the voice and the mood when we parse a verb. There are five parts to every verb. There is the person, the number, the tense, the voice, and the mood. So from here on out, 
the answer for voice is active. I know you haven't technically learned voice, so the answer will be active until I say otherwise. So freebie points, hooray. Mood, you now have a couple options. Your options are either the indicative or the imperative. The indicative, those are all the verbs you've learned up till now. This chapter, you learned the imperative, which are the commands. This is not a command form. Now we got to this is an indicative form, which indicates fact. It will happen. We will sail. Who will sail? First person plural. We will sail men tomorrow. Tomorrow, comma, men. We will sail. We will sail tomorrow, comma, men. You can pretty much put the vocative wherever you need when you translate it into English. Semicolon and then animos from animos e masculine. It means mind, it can also mean courage or heart. It's the intellectual part of you. Mind. It can also mean your mood. So animos, os, that's accusative, plural, masculine. There's no preposition, no preposition preceding this noun. So it's not going to be an accusative motion towards, but the accusative direct object. Direct object, receiving the action of the verb, whatever that verb may be. Westros, from Wester, Westra, Westrum, your, yours. This is your plural. Your singular is tuus a um. This is your plural. So Westros, possessive adjective, it's modifying this noun animos because it is accusative, it is plural, it is masculine. Also, accusative plural masculine. So it's not just minds, but your minds, y'all's minds, you plural. And then we have parate. Now check out parate. It is the present stem, para, of para, parare, parawe, paratus, plus the te to make the imperative plural. So we have the imperative plural. Krasviri navigabimus animos vestros parate. So prepare, get ready. Not just singular, that would be para, singular imperative. This is a plural imperative, parate, animos westros, because we're addressing plural weary men. We will sail tomorrow, men. Notice the offset by comma, because of the vocative direct address. Prepare, you could also add a ye, comma, ye, comma, your minds. Prepare ye your minds. <clears throat> Notice how you parse out an imperative. All imperatives are second person. All imperatives are second person because you are commanding a you, second person. Now, imperatives can be singular or they can be plural. The singular imperative of this verb would be para. The plural is parate. We have the plural here. All imperatives are present tense until I say otherwise, <laughs> and our active voice, as said earlier. The voice is active and imperative mood, as opposed to the indicative mood. Indicative mood, imperative mood, commands. Optime, sententia secunda. Alt amicus meus, alt inimicus es. Because only a Sith deals in absolute. Isn't that an absolute statement? Be quiet. Out, and then another out. So out means or. It's a disjunctive conjunction. Or. You can have either this or that. And out is disjunctive in that there are two options, or at least two options. And if you pick one, it closes off the other option. So either X or Y. You may have either pizza or nachos. Oh. But if you pick one... Uh -huh it closes off the other one. So if you pick pizza, you can't have nachos. Eh. But if you pick nachos, you can't have pizza. Eh. Sorry. Out, pick one, closes the other off. That's opposed to well, V-E-L, well. Now, the conjunction well also means or, like out does. But well, that's you can have this or this if you like. You can have both if you want. You can have this or this. You can have X or if you like, you can have Y. So you can have pizza, ooh, or if you like, 
you can also have nachos. Wow. Yeah, so well, you can have either or. Out, you can have either this or that, and pick one or the other. So out, and it correlates, its correlative is another out. So oh, either or, either or. When out's just by itself, it means or, but when it correlates to another one, it's either this or this. So amicus from amicus e masculine means friend from the adjective amicus a um. Now this form amicus has to be nominative, singular, and masculine. And if it's nominative, then its reason is the subject. So we're looking at the subject of the sentence, amicus. Meus, meus is a possessive adjective. Meus a um my or mine, and it agrees with the noun amicus. It is also nominative, singular, and masculine. So either my friend, out, or it's the second correlative to the first out. So either this or inimicus a um, enemy from inimicus, uh, inimicus e masculine enemy from the adjective inimicus a um, unfriendly not your friend, not your amicus. It is also nominative, singular, masculine. If it's nominative, it is also the subject. <gasps> we have two subjects? Well, we do have a conjunction here, or this, S. And actually, they're not subjects at all. They're nominatives, but they are predicate nominatives because the subject is, here we have S. That's your irregular friend, sum esse fui futuris to be. To be, this is the second singular, present, active, indicative. The second singular, you, present tense, are, active, indicative. You are, thou art. It could also be the second singular, present, active, imperative, be. Be either my friend or enemy, but it probably is you are, s, thou art. Grammatically, it could be either one, but context would tell you which one's more correct. Thou art, you are either my friend or my enemy. Either my friend or my enemy, you are, thou art. So, amicus and inimicus are both predicate nominatives. The, the subject is you, you are, you are this. Optime. Cur auxilium legate, socis nosris non davas. This is sententia tertia. Cur. Aren't you curious as to why? So why? This is an adverb. Asking why, that's a verbal thing. Why did this happen? Why is this a thing? So why? Adverb. Cur. And it's an interrogative. We're asking a question. Why is this happening? So interrogative. Cur. Auxilium, from auxilium, e, neuter, help or aid. In the plural auxilia, it would mean reinforcements, but here we have it in the singular, so it's just help or aid. It's either the nominative, in which case it would be the subject, or it is the accusative direct object. There's no preposition in front of it showing motion. So either the subject or the direct object. Legate, legate. Notice it's offset by commas, so that's a dead giveaway that this is a vocative direct address. Also, it is the it looks like the vocative of legatus e masculine, a legate, an envoy, an ambassador, a lieutenant. Uh, we have a different form for the vocative than the nominative if we have a second if we have a second declension masculine that ends in us, like legatus. Its vocative will end in an E. So legatus becomes legate, like amicus becomes amice, and dominus becomes domine. The plurals will be look the same as the nominative. Once again, English, we have these handy little commas. So we offset this word with commas. So direct address. We're asking a legate, an envoy, an, amb an ambassador, what's going on? Cor, why? Legatus. Why, Lieutenant? Socius. From Socius, E masculine, ally, comrade, companion. This could either be dative or ablative plural. If it's dative, it'll show the 
indirect object. If it's ablative, well, there's no preposition around. So that eliminates everything except for ablative of means. So we would do the action of the verb by means of our allies. That seems kind of far off. Could be, but probably is going to be dative. Let's find out. Nosris from nostear, nosra, nosro, meaning our, belonging to us. It also looks like it is dative or ablative plural. Probably masculine to agree with sokis. So our allies. Known. Known, adverb not, negates a verb. So it's negating the verb dabas, do, dare, dedi, datus, to give. Dabas, second singular imperfect, active indicative. It's not imperative, it's not a command, it's an indicative. The action is happening, or it was not happening. That's a fact. Indicative indicates fact. Dabas, so it's second person singular, imperfect, ba. There's the present stem of do, dare, imperfect. You were giving. You were not giving. Why were you, you is the subject, you not giving? That means that auxilium, if it's not the subject, has to be the direct object. Why were you not giving aid, help, legatus, vocative, we're addressing a lieutenant, lieutenant, comma, why were you not giving help to dative, indirect object? Indirect objects receive the direct object. You give, or in this case not give, a direct object to an indirect object. Why were you not giving help to our allies? Lieutenant. You can put the lieutenant, the vocative direct address, pretty much anywhere you need to in the English translation. Just remember to offset it with commas. Optime. Quarta. Porta vistine, mi fili, tuum gladium a villa ad campum. I mean, be careful. You might get stopped by the cops. Porta vistine, so porto, portare, portavi, portatus, to carry. Porta visti, this is the perfect stem. And then isti, from i, isti, it, imus, istis, erunt, isti. That's the second person singular perfect tense. So this is perfect tense, and it's active, and it's indicative. It's indicative, not an imperative. It's not a command. This is the indicative mood. Supporta visti. And it's got an enclitic ne attached like a parasitic alien to this form. This is like the uh, upside down backwards question mark in Spanish to indicate that we have an interrogative. We have a question here, and a question that can be answered with either yes or no. And we're not trying to influence it. It's a neutral, yes or no. Did you or did you not? So, puerta wisti. Did you, singular, didst thou, did you carry? Have you carried? Hast thou carried? Me feely. Ah, notice commas. Those commas, commas, commas. Offset by commas. Vocative, direct address. We are directly addressing, this is the vocative of meus filius. So meos a um and filios e masculine son. So these are the vocative forms. Remember that the vocative of meos is me, and the vocative of a second declension masculine noun ending in i u s like filios. The vocative is fili with one i. Fili, mi fili. My son, did you carry? Did you carry my son? Notice the it would be commas. Did you carry comma my son? Otherwise, it sounds like, did you carry my son? Where son is the direct object of the verb instead of the direct address. So careful with that. Careful with your commas. Tuus a um. So yours, singular, because we're addressing a singular son. So something that belongs to him is going to be singular. Or the thing does not have to be singular. The pronoun has to be singular. The possessive adjective has to be singular. Your. Uh, um, this is either the neuter, nominative or accusative, or the accusative singular masculine. Probably agreeing with gladium, gladium or from gladius e masculine, a sword. Gladium would be the accusative singular masculine direct object. I don't see a preposition in front of it indicating motion towards. So the direct object of a verb. Hey, we've already had that verb. Carry. So the Direct object, you're the you, 
That's the subject. You did the verb to the direct object. Did you carry your sword? Tuum, possessive adjective, modifying the noun gladium. Did you carry your sword, my son? My son, did you carry your sword? Didst thou carry thy sword? Ah, 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 preposition meaning from, away from, takes the ablative, showing separation. We la a feminine, a farmhouse. We la with the macron over the final a, that's an ablative, singular feminine, ablative of separation. We are moving away from the farmhouse. So, son, did you take your sword out of the farmhouse? Ad compum. Ad preposition takes the accusative case to show motion, movement towards, and compum from compus e masculine field, plain. So we're going to the field. It's an unfarmed land as opposed to agar. Agar is your farmland, worked by an agricola, a farmer. This is compum, unfarmed land. It's not your crops, it's just a plain. So the subject is you. Did you carry? Direct address, my son. Now the direct object is your sword. Did you carry your sword? from the farmhouse to the field, comma, my son. Optime. Quinta. Ambula puer magna cum diligentia per silvam. Ambula. Okay, this is ambulo, ambulare, ambulavi, ambulatus, to walk. Now that form is the imperative. This is the imperative mood. It's not an indicative. It doesn't indicate fact. This is an imperative, a command. So we are commanding a singular ambula person to walk. Ambula ambulare, this is the present stem. The present stem is the same as the imperative, or the imperative is the same as the present stem. Second principle part, chop off the, the RE. So ambula. This would be a second person singular, present active imperative, imperative mood. Notice the commas. Puer, direct address. This is going to be the vocative. And in this case, the vocative case is the same as the nominative case in this case. Okay, I'll stop. Puer, pueri, masculine, boy, and it's the vocative. The only reason for the vocative is the direct address. So we're talking to you, boy. Boy, walk, walk, boy. Magna cum diligentia. So magna, macron over the second A, from magnus a um, great, big, large, in size or importance. This is the ablative, magna, singular and feminine. Don't know what it's doing yet. Cum, preposition cum, which means with, takes the ablative case and can indicate either accompaniment or manner. Diligentia, from diligentia I, feminine, diligence, care, attention. This is the ablative form. Diligentia, macron over the final A. Diligentia, I, feminine, diligence, care, ablative, singular, feminine. Now, what kind of ablative is this? Is this ablative of accompaniment? Did we do some action along with diligence? Come on, diligence, come with us. We can't have a party without you, you know. Oh, thank you, diligence blushes. No, this is not ablative of accompaniment. This is ablative of manner. Notice the word order as well. If you have an ablative of manner, where you have just the bare noun, so cum diligentia, with diligence, you need the preposition cum. But if there's a modifying adjective, and magna does have the same gender number in case as diligentia, the word order must then be adjective, cum, noun. But you can choose to get rid of the cum if you want and just have magna diligentia. Either way, ablative of manner. Ablatives of manner are pretty clear almost adverbial, and they go with the action of the verb. They describe how the action of the verb was carried out. How, not with what instrument, but how, in what manner, with great diligence, with great care. Be careful. Walk carefully. Walk very carefully, boy. Per silvam. Per, preposition, means through, takes the accusative case. It's like accusative motion towards. We're going through it. And then silwan from silwa i feminine woods forest accusative singular feminine it's accusative because of the preposition pair you can say accusative motion towards if you want so walk boy with great care with great diligence through the forest walk through the forest with great care boy optime sexta opugnate viri tellis vesris gallos 
So opugnate from opugno, opugnare, opugnawi, opugnato. It's not just a pugno, opugnare fight, but this is opugno, to attack, assault. This is an imperative, imperative mood, a command form. So we're commanding plural, commanding plural because the singular would be opugna, attack, a singular person attack. To make the plural, you add te, opugnate. So this is the second person, plural, present active, imperative, imperative mood. And notice we're offset by commas is the vocative, direct address, weary, from weir, weary, masculine. It could be genitive singular, it's not. It could be nominative plural, it's not. But it is vocative plural, direct address. We are directly addressing men. Men, comma, attack, assault. Tellis, tellis from tellum e neuter, weapons, assault weapons. These are offensive weaponry, your spears, your javelins, your projectiles. It is either dative or ablative, plural, and it's going to be plural and neuter. So probably going to lean towards ablative because there's no preposition in sight, and uh, a, quite a well-used ablative without a preposition is ablative of means, also called instrumentality, by means of which, by use of this instrument, by use of weapons, we do the action of the verb. The action of the verb is carried out by means of a thing, by means of an object or an instrument, like weapons. So attack men by means of weapons. If it's not ablative, it'll be dative indirect object, but it's probably ablative. Westris, from Wester, Westra, Westra, meaning your, yours, plural, not to um singular, yours, plural. And we are addressing plural, we are rimen, and also the imperative is plural. So this has got to be plural as well. And it looks like it agrees with tellis, indicating that the weapons belong to y'all, to the men. So also dative or ablative, plural, neuter, probably ablative. And then gallos, and the last word in the sentence, and that pretty much sums up what Telly's Westries is. No reason for it to be dative indirect object. It's going to be ablative of means, like we thought. Good job, guys. Gallos, that from, comes from gallus e masculine, a Gallic person, from the adjective gallus a um, gall, gaulish. These are the Gauls. Gallos, accusative plural masculine. Direct object, gallos. Direct object of the verb apugnate. So men, comma, attack the Gauls with your weapons. That's not very nice. Attack the Gauls with your weapons, comma, men. Remember the Romans did not have exclamation marks. You can add them though, because you have them. Septima, porta agricola, ver fermentum, well aquam ex agris. So porta, imperative mood. Porto, portare, portavi, portatus, to carry. This is the singular imperative. It is a second person singular present active imperative mood. It is the command form, the same as the present stem. So second principle part, portare, chop off the RE, porta, carry. You're ordering one person to carry, like this guy. Notice offset by commas, and also not the first word. So agricola, same form as the nominative, agricola I masculine, but this is the vocative, vocative direct address. So we are directly addressing you, farmer. Remember, all imperatives are second person. You, farmer, as well as all vocatives. Farmer, you carry, carry you. And then we have well. Remember, well is opposed to out in that well means or, if you like, in addition to, or even more so. Or out is a disjunctive in that it's either this or that. So it is correlative, it correlates to this well. We have either this thing, either thing X or thing Y, and you can have both thing X and thing I if you, or thing Y if you want. Fermentum e neuter, grain, nominative or accusative, singular neuter. Now, uh, we're not addressing grain. So grain's not doing the action. We're telling the farmer to do the action. So we know that fermentum can't be the nominative subject. 
it has to be the accusative direct object, object of porta, the verb, the imperative. So carry either grain, well aquam, or aquam, water, from aqua, I feminine, water. That's the accusative singular feminine direct object of porta. Carry either grain or, if you like, water. You can carry both if you want. Ex agris, preposition ex, from ager, agri, masculine, field, crops. So out of, this is an ablative of separation. We're out of the fields, out of the crops. Ex. So carry, farmer, either grain or water out of the fields. Carry either grain or water, or if you like, water, out of the fields, farmer. Optime. Servos, mi domine, libera. So servos, from servos e masculine, slave. Servos is accusative plural masculine, and because there's no preposition preceding the noun, I'm going to assume that it's the accusative direct object, direct object of some verb to be met. Me is the vocative direct address of meos, so my, notice offset by commas, and then domine, from dominus e masculine, lord or master. And this is the vocative of dominus. So dominus being a second declension masculine and with the nominative ending in us, us, its vocative is e, the letter e. So domine, mi domine, servos mi domine, libera. Slaves, my master, libera, from libera, libero, liberare, liberavi, liberatus, to free, to set free. Libera, this is the imperative mood. We, this is the second singular present active imperative. So free, set free. Servos, the direct object, slaves, direct object of this verb. So the imperative mood, command. Free, set free the slaves, my master. My master, set the slaves free. Set free the slaves. Optime. Nona. Sententia nona. Nonne legatus cum copiis ad campum appropriinquavit. So nonne. Nonne particle. It is known and ne. So it is a particle that begins an interrogative when you want a yes answer or expecting a yes answer. Legatus, from legatus e masculine, envoy, lieutenant, legate. It is the nominative singular masculine form. So if it's nominative, it is the subject, the subject of the sentence, subject of a verb. Legatus is doing the action of the verb. Cum, preposition means with, takes either the ablative of accompaniment or the ablative of manner. Copiis, from copii arum, feminine plural. It means troops or forces in the plural. And with cum, it could be dative, but it is probably going to be the ablative case. Ablative of accompaniment. Cum copiis. So something not is not the lieutenant doing something along with the forces. Odd, preposition odd, meaning two towards, takes the accusative to show motion towards, and compum, compus e masculine, field or plane, we are going towards the field, towards the plane. So compum, accusative motion towards, and then appropriinquavit from appropriinquo, appropriinquare, appropriinquavi, appropriinquatus, which means to approach. It can take either odd and the accusative motion towards, hey, like there, or it could also take the dative. It means to approach, go towards. And it is the third singular perfect active indicative. There's the perfect stem plus e is the it, imus is the erunt, appropriinquavit. Ask the question as if we want a yes answer. Did not the lieutenant, didn't the lieutenant, the legate, approach uh, the field with forces? 
did the lieutenant approach the plane with his forces, with his troops? Didn't he? Yes, he did. And decimo, decimo. Magno pueri de periculo cogitate. So magno from magno sa um. Great, large, big, size or importance. It's either the dative or the ablative, singular, masculine or neuter. And then pueri is, hey, offset by commas. Not the nominative plural from puer, pueri, masculine, boy, but the vocative plural. And the vocative only has one reason, the direct address. So we're addressing the boys. So something big and then boys. De periculo. De is a preposition meaning down from. It can also mean are about or concerning, and it takes the ablative. Periculo. From periculum e neuter. Danger, peril, risk. So either dative probably is the ablative because it is preceded by a preposition that takes the ablative. We're either going down from danger or have a about danger, concerning danger. And we had that adjective magno from magnusaum that could be dative or ablative singular. So magno agrees, it modifies periculo. They both have the same gender number and case. De magno periculo. Boys, about the great danger, cogitate. From cogito, cogitare, cogitavi, cogitatus, to think, consider, to think on, to ruminate. This is imperative mood. The singular imperative will be cogita. The plural is cogitate, add the te. So second plural, present active imperative. Imperative mood, the command form. Think. Think, boys. Boys, think. So boys, think about the great danger. Boys, think about the big risk. Optime. Very well done. That takes care of exercise C. You are now ready to move on to exercise D. Valete omnes.